Hello there. It's me again. Out in the middle of nowhere, or, well, at least the closest I can get to it right now. You know, you're never really in the middle of nowhere anymore. Even though I have this amazing, beautiful backdrop that looks straight out of a Western movie. If I pan too far to the right, well, by gum, you can see the Vegas Strip in the distance. I'll go ahead and zoom in for those of you who can't see what I'm talking about. Anyway, I can't go out to the real middle of nowhere right now because, well, unfortunately, my dang car is in the shop again. Okay, this is just gonna be one of them videos where I complain about stuff, so if that's not your bag, then go ahead and turn it off. I know I got some emails from people this summer saying, oh, we can't follow you anymore. You've gotten too negative. Uh, but then I also talked to some people who said they really liked it when I did my little rants or vlog sessions. So, I don't know, watch it if you want. I'm not really here just to complain. I mean, yeah, it sucks that my car's in the, in the shop, but guess what? It turned out to be like the ultimate Christmas miracle because well, it's a long story, and I frankly don't quite understand the whole thing entirely, but uh, the long and the short of it is, well, I busted uh, one of my CV boots, and now I gotta have the uh, CV axles replaced. And what caused the boot to bust was not my fault. Um, apparently, well, first of all, let me say that I've been trying to off-road much more gently than I used to, because, you know, my car is getting up there in age, over 100,000 miles, you know, after I had all that suspension work done with my shocks and everything, I thought, well, let me just, you know, go a little easier on the old gal. So I haven't been rallying around like I'm in the Baja 500 or hitting any crazy dips or rolling over rocks or anything. But somehow, uh, again, I don't really understand this, but I guess there's like a sway bar that connects to a bushing with like a bracket. Somehow that bracket got crazy, like over 90 degrees bent by something. And so the guys at my mechanic... Well, their assumption was that I hit a rock or something crazy, which I haven't, and I told them that. So they have an alternate theory of what might have happened. And unfortunately, well, it was none of my doing. It was probably just a mistake on the part of someone who worked on my car recently. That's all I'll say about that. Anyway, why I call it a Christmas miracle is... Gosh, can you imagine if it happened when I was out in the middle of nowhere? I mean, I was really lucky. I just happened to be driving back from Chipotle, uh, two miles from my house one day, when I heard this knocking sound coming out of my right front wheel well. And so it was dark, but I got out, pulled over to a safe place, got out and got my headlamp and looked around and it was grease splattered all over inside the wheel well. I took some photos, posted it online. Uh, the general consensus was, yeah, it looks like the axle or the boot broke. So this was like two days before Christmas. My mechanic was able to squeeze me in last minute to at least take a look at it. Because at first he was like, oh, you can drive with a busted CV boot. No problem. People do that for years. You know, because he was trying to go on Christmas break for like two weeks. So he wasn't going to be able to look at me till, you know, January. But I told him I was making a really loud noise. And I go, well, what, should I just turn the radio up to drown that out if you're saying it's okay to drive like that? And he goes, well, how, how loud is it? Oh, all right, bring it by. I'll take a look at it. So this guy made time to squeeze me in like two days before Christmas. I really appreciate that. Andrew at Trusted Imports uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, they, him and his guys checked it out, and that's how they figured out that that... Uh, bracket was bent and anyway they were able to sort of bend the bracket back into shape and like get everything to where it was seaworthy enough for now uh and then he's going to replace both axles when he comes back on january 7th but you know what that means he told me i was okay to drive around town and stay on pavement but he said no off-roading so until january 7th which today's december 30th so that's like over a week from now. Well, I'm in what I call pavement purgatory. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so I can only go places that I can access uh, on paved roads, which well, fortunately, this beautiful place here is one of them. I mean, I'm all, it's at a place called Late Night Trailhead. If you were driving over the hump to Pahrump and Tacopa, uh, it's Blue Diamond Road and you pass this little, well, it's part of Red Rock Canyon. It's just gorgeous. It's mostly used by mountain bikers, uh, so I just hiked way up on top of a rock where I didn't expect any dang mountain biking bros to come bother me. And well, I think I found a pretty nice little spot.
Anyway, like I said, that's nothing to complain about. Uh, one week not being able to off-road is certainly not going to be the death of me. I got plenty of videos still in the can, so to speak. So don't worry, won't miss a week. And well, being being tied to the pavement uh, is actually kind of a fun challenge because there are a couple of things I've been wanting to shoot videos kind of around the Vegas area that are accessible by paved roads. And so this will just give me the perfect opportunity to do that. So I'm not complaining at all. Incidentally, you might be wondering about this hat I'm wearing. <laughs> well, I forgot I even had it. Uh, I had It's a Tuscan, I think it's Tuscan lambskin. I think they were like a thing in the 60s, maybe 70s. Uh, I used to have an even better one. One of my ex-boyfriends uh, lived in Portland, Oregon, where they have amazing thrift stores. And he got me this really cool, it was a little bit even bigger and fluffier and uh, lighter than this, like a big white poof that sat on top of my head. Oh, it was amazing, but I, unfortunately I wore it around one too many campfires and it started to get real smoky smelling and kind of sooty. So I washed it and then my dingling self put it in the dryer and it, well, it dried out the, because it's lamb skin, you know, it dried it out and well, lost its stretch. And unfortunately it's no good to wear anymore. So I, I looked all over online trying to find a Tuscan lamb skin, huge fluffy white hat. And this was the closest thing I could find. And it's pretty good. It's real warm and... Well, I think it's stylish. Anywho, the real reason I came up here was, well, it's December 30th. It's almost the end of 2020, <laughs> everyone's favorite year. And I sort of felt obligated to make some kind of year-end wrap-up video. I'm sure every good YouTuber has to make an end-of-year wrap-up video. And I did think about like doing one like, my top 10 favorite adventures of 2020. But I don't know, that just seemed tired. And I thought, oh, let me just come up here and just do a little unscripted heartfelt rambling. <laughs> so the first thing I have to say about 2020 is I'm actually super lucky because <laughs> I didn't lose my job, I didn't lose my house, and nothing really bad happened to me. If anything, I just got more YouTube viewers because there was more people stuck at home watching YouTube. So financially, I guess I did all right. Uh, you know, I was still able to be creatively fulfilled because well, hey, most of the places I like going weren't shut down, you know, because of the virus. So I was still able to travel around and see a lot of cool, interesting, beautiful stuff. So all things considered, I really have nothing to complain about. But just like anyone, there's always something to complain about. <laughs> but all joking aside, I don't know, I, try, I do try to put on a positive front for most of my videos. And I am actually, by nature, uh, an optimistic, positive person. So when something bad happens to me, I always figure out a way to turn it around and make it into a positive. You know, I'm the queen of making lemonade out of lemons. Uh, so I've always pretty much always presented as happy-go-lucky on this channel. I mean, yeah, I've done a few rants here and there where I was complaining about stuff. But, man, I got to be honest with you right now, and I'll only say this once. <laughs> it was a really rough year for me. Um, partly because of the pandemic. You know, I am a social person, so it was hard for me to be cut off from people. But it wasn't even really just the pandemic. It was some other completely unrelated personal stuff that was going on. And unfortunately, I'm not one of them YouTubers that likes to air out my personal laundry on the internet. Well, actually, I do like, I'll be honest, I do like airing out my personal laundry on the internet. But I also have a great deal of compassion and respect for the other people involved. I'll just say that. So... Uh, I don't want to like put anybody on blast or call anyone out by name, but well, let me tell you, if I was the type to make those kinds of videos, my viewership would go through the roof because if you want to hear about some crazy drama, I had some crazy drama this year. I mean, I'd even go so far to say this was probably the most emotionally draining year I've ever had. I cried more than I've ever cried in my life, I think. And it's interesting because... Uh, you know, I am kind of a, or I was, a melancholic person by nature. Like, yeah, I was diagnosed type 2 bipolar once, which I don't think was an accurate diagnosis. Uh, because I'm not overly moody and I'm never so depressed that I can't get out of bed. You know, I just get, I feel a lot. I'm an empath, so I feel things strongly. And so some, things would just make me sad sometimes. All growing up as a little girl, everything. But not, like I said, to the point where it impacted my life. I just always... You know, I would cry easy at a movie, and sometimes I'd fall into a funk and get depressed, but I always managed to snap myself out of it because I'm also, well, I'm also very determined to live a happy life. And so, by gum, I will do whatever it takes, by hook or by crook, to make that a reality. 
So like uh, over the last, well, I've lived in Vegas 20 years. I remember there was periods over that 20 years where I would get really kind of depressed and lonely because I didn't really have a lot of friends or whatever. If I ever really got into a funk, my little way of dealing if, with it back then was I would go to the, well, I would go to, there used to be this magic store in Vegas called Bell Book and Candle. And it was in this really seedy strip mall and it had this blacked out windows and it was written in this old English script, Bell Book and Candle. And there was this big, tall, sh shaggy-haired, heavy sit. Well, I called him a wizard, the guy that worked there, and he was always barefoot. He was always shuffling around. Like, the store it was a small little store lined with shelves and shelves and shelves of herbs and different things that were labeled, like, wolf's bane or <laughs> wolf's nipple chips or whatever, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, but they also sold those candles in a jar, those seven-day candles that uh, are supposedly jinx-breaking candles. I guess at this particular magic store, you could uh, go in and he would put stuff on it to, to where the candle would do whatever you wanted it to do. Well, I always wanted it to break a jinx because I wanted to break this spell of depression that was on me. So if I ever got really moody or depressed, which had only ever happened about maybe four times, I would go down to this magic store and the wizard would give me a candle off the shelf and then he'd sprinkle a little bit of this jar, a little bit of that jar, a little bit of this oil, and then he would sprinkle glitter over the tippy top and cover it with saran wrap. And it was like seven bucks, man. And it's, I don't even believe in any of this new age stuff. So don't think any worse of me for telling you this story. It was just kind of a, uh, what do you call it, like a placebo thing, like the ritual of it. I would go home and light the candle and burn it until the friggin' thing burned down. And when the f final bit of the candle burned, my mood would clear. Well, guess what? It always worked. I always got cheered up like right away pretty much after buying the dang candle. So <laughs> placebo or not, it, it was my goofy little way of cheering myself up out of these weird funks that I would get in periodically. But then, guess what happened? <laughs> well, I think my problem was I just didn't have any hobbies or any creative outlet back then. Because uh, about 10 years ago, starting about 10 years ago, is when I started modeling and I started writing a blog and uh, well, I started writing for different newspapers. And then I started this YouTube channel. And let me tell you something. I think, gosh, since about, well, I had like a sort of unfortunate romantic thing happen to me in 2014. But after that, I don't think I cried at all or maybe just a few times from like 2015 to 2020 it was wild it was like five years i was happy and now part of that is i purposely keep myself very very busy so that i don't have time to sit around and think about how you know where is my life going that those kinds of big questions because <laughs> those are the kinds of things that well tend to depress me or did well I kept myself so busy and still do keep myself so busy that I really just didn't have time to be sad and I didn't cry at all for like five years anyway that all changed uh pretty much right around the beginning of 2020 I mean people keep talking about 2020 like it's a cursed year and like I said at first really it wasn't a bad year for me I mean professionally and financially I did all right everything's okay but, uh, gosh, emotionally, it was rough. And, well, unfortunately, I don't even really have anybody I can talk to about it because my sister, who is my closest, I guess, friend, confidant, it, she's been tied up being a nanny, and so she doesn't have any time. I had two little babies and a little toddler. Anyway, I didn't have her to talk to, and I don't know. I also just felt silly burdening anyone else with my first world problems when there's all this horrible stuff going on in the world. So I basically did not tell anyone about my problems. I just sort of kept them to myself. And I did, you know, I had my little mini rants on this channel where I complain about stuff and that, that did help me to vent it somewhat. But there was still a lot of sadness. I mean, I was, I don't know, I was carrying a lot of sadness. And I know that sounds objectively ridiculous. Like, oh, here I am sitting here. Uh, by the way, I wore all these bright colors on purpose to, you know, try to cheer myself up. But, you know, like, I'm relatively young and attractive and I have a YouTube channel and I have this awesome life going around exploring. What do I have to be sad about? Huh. Well, everyone has something they could be sad about. You know, you just don't judge somebody. Even, like, you know, you look at the most beautiful supermodel or movie star. Like, look at Marilyn Monroe. Beautiful, top of the world, could have had any man she wanted and... Well, I mean, I suppose it's debatable that she committed suicide, but she wasn't a very happy person. So basically my point in saying all of that is just because, uh, well, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. No, just kidding. Just because I seem like I'm having a good time. Well, I'm the queen of faking it till I make it and the show must go on. So I'm not trying to, now it sounds like I'm just trying to get sympathy for this. I'm not, I'm just, I don't know, man. I guess I'm just trying to... Well, I'm just trying to, I just want somebody to listen to me. That's all. Like, like I said earlier, turn it off if it's boring.
So, we're at the end of the year now. I muddled through the best I could, and I, I did all right, you know? I grew a lot as a person, I'll say that. I learned uh, to be much more compassionate towards people who are going through certain things um, that I never had any experience with, and now I do. So, yes, it's definitely, there's been some positives to come out of all this. And like most people, I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic about 2021. I know nothing is going to magically change when the calendar rolls over, but I don't know, I can kind of just feel like I'm starting to sense that hope is on the horizon and things might, I mean, things will probably never go back to the way they were, but things are going, things are going to get better. Ooh, child, things are going to get easier. <laughs> but 2020 ain't over yet. You know, they go, it's not over till the fat lady sings. <laughs> well, guess what? 2020 still had a few little surprises to throw my way. One of them uh, is a m friggin' medical surprise. I went in for all my medical tests uh, uh, last couple weeks. Like, I went and got my annual physical. Everything was good, man. All my blood levels were... Um, where they should be. Uh, I guess my good cholesterol was a little on the low side and I need more protein. So I've been drinking a lot of bone broth lately, if you know what that is. It's got like 10 grams of protein per cup and it's hot and delicious and keeps you warm. Well, it's not vegetarian, that's the only downside, but it's what I've been making do with. Uh, so basically my physical went fine. Then I had to go to the gynecologist and <laughs> pause it right here if this is just TMI for you, but um, I just went for my annual exam and I come to find out I had a yeast infection. She goes, I have a female gynecologist. She goes, hey, uh, have you been eating a lot of sugar lately? And I have. I've been drinking a cup of cocoa every day, sometimes with Baileys or peppermint schnapps and whipped cream. Uh, so maybe that's what caused it. It also could have been any number of the funky hot springs I've been soaking in lately. I don't know what it was, but she gave me a pill for that. Uh, but then the, the results of my pap smear came back. Uh, irregular or abnormal. Um, so basically what they're doing with that is they're checking for cervical cancer and they take a, basically they take a giant Q-tip and swab it around up on your cervix and then they take the cells or the culture and then they send it into a lab and a radiologist reviews it, analyzes it. And well, by gum, it came back showing uh, some kind of abnormal cells. So further investigation is warranted. Which, to be honest, isn't the end of the world. I've had a few uh, results like this before in the past. Um, I guess one time, I don't remember why, it just kind of cleared up on its own. The other couple times I had to have what's called a colposcopy, where they go in and... <laughs> well, they basically clip off, I think, a piece of your cervix. It sounds horrible. Uh, and then they do what's called a cone biopsy on it. And, well, fortunately, both of those previous times, it came back fine. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed... <laughs> This will be the same dealio. But again, it's something that I really didn't want to complain to anyone about in person. Weirdly, here I am telling everybody on the internet about it, but I don't know, I guess that's just one of my personal foibles. I feel, and to be honest, that's actually why I, a big part of why I started blogging and vlogging in the first place is I'm a really good listener. Uh, if you know me in real life uh, and you have problems, I will sit and listen with eye contact and give you feedback. I, I'm a really good listener. So much so that I feel like no one ever really wants to sit and listen to me in person. So that's why I make these videos and used to write this blog. Because like, well, at least that way I could get my stuff out there and somebody would read it or watch it. So I didn't want to complain about any of this to people in real life. Um, and I'm not even really complaining about it to you. I'm just mentioning it because, yeah, it did make, it, it's made me kind of nervous. And it kind of bummed me out, to be honest. It was like, man, 2020 was almost over and I thought I was going to skate free, not necessarily free, because I shouldn't discount my emotional trauma that I suffered this year. That was probably worse than, you know, whatever's going on with my cervix, maybe. Uh, but it was just kind of a bummer, like, oh man, three days before the end of the year, and now this. Anyway, hopefully, like I was saying earlier, 2021 will be better, and well, by golly, I'll feel like a whole new woman in, well, hopefully just a couple of weeks. But aside from my car problems, my cervix problems, uh, my personal, well, I'll just be honest, they were romantic problems, uh, there's one other thing that's kind of weighing on my mind, and again, it's another situation where I don't want to say too much or mention any names, but man, I'll just say this. I am an optimist, and I really try to see the good in people. You know, I can't tell you how many people comment and message me saying, you better be careful, Wonder Hussy. I can't believe you go around talking to these weird people or going to these weird places. A lot of you seem to just automatically suspect the worst of people. Well, I don't. 
my MO is I always automatically assume the best of people. So if I meet some creepy old guy at a hot spring, I just always assume he's, hey, he's an older guy and he's maybe comes off kind of creepy, but he's probably cool. And oh, so far, it's worked out great for me. I've never once in my entire life, I'll say this right now, I've never had a me too moment. Uh, maybe I also, part of that is I have a higher tolerance for freaky behavior, but nothing has ever affected me personally. Uh, I've never had anyone try to physically harm me or attack me. You know, a lot of that is I'm just lucky, but also a lot of it is I feel like you you get what you put out, you know? Like, I love the world. I expect the world to love me right back. Gosh darn it. <laughs> and, well, it really has. Uh, but the downside to that is, well, I guess sometimes I do misjudge people that I think are well-meaning good people, and then they just unfortunately turn out not to be. It's kind of a bummer because it just, I don't want any of this to let me become cynical. I don't want any of this to make me cynical. You know, I want to continue to be optimistic. And if people let me down here or there, well, by golly, I'll just take that as a, a tax. I think I've probably talked about this in a video before. There's this book I read by this guy, John Halcyon Stein. He's a burning man, dude with pink hair. Uh, where he talks about having an optimism tax. Like, if you're always optimistic and assume the best of people, well, sure, every once in a while someone's going to take advantage of you, but, hey, it's worth paying that little tax for the awesomeness of being an optimistic person. So, despite what happened to me emotionally slash romantically, I'm still going to try to keep an open heart, you know, and not close myself off. And despite what happened to me with the other situation... Well, unfortunately, that does kind of give me a little bit of a jaded eye because, well, especially here in Vegas, man, it just seems like everyone's on the make and everyone has an agenda and people are just trying to, what, what can they get out of you? What can you do for them? You know, so I feel like I may have been used or taken advantage of a time or two. Uh, but that's really all I can say about that right now because it's an ongoing situation and, um... Oh, gosh. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to have a good new year. <laughs> anyway, I feel like I've sat here yakking long enough. I guess I don't need these sunglasses anymore because, <laughs> well, by gum, the sun has gone down behind that ridge line there. And, man, I should just take a minute to enjoy everything I have here. Like, like I said, man. I just got in my car and drove 30 minutes, and here I am. I heard uh, burrows, wild burrows, braying in the distance. I see their poo all around me. It's quiet. It's beautiful. I mean, look at these friggin' mountains, man. I mean, I'm, I really am one of the luckiest people uh, on the face of this earth, and that's no exaggeration. And any of you, I know there are some of you watching this that are legitimately suffering bad stuff, and I... I'm with you. I feel you. And I'm, I'm, you're in my thoughts, I guess. I don't know. It sounds hollow, but it's true. I really am with you. For me, even all those stupid little things I was just talking about, if you look at the population of the planet Earth, I mean, look at these friggin' kids and this orphanage that Gloria runs and uh, all these, you know, poor people in all these countries in Bangladesh. And, oh, man, I mean, here I am, a white lady. <laughs> In Las Vegas, wearing a Tuscan lamb's wool or lamb's skin hat. <laughs> what do I have to complain about, man? I have it better than 99... I'm going to go ahead and say I have it better than like 99.9 probably percent of the planet. Maybe. <laughs> and you should never use that as an excuse to beat yourself up for feeling sad. Because even if you do have it better off than... 100% of people on the planet, hey, guess what? You might still get sad about stuff sometimes, and that's okay. It's okay to be sad. I don't know why it's such a stigma in our society to cry or be sad. I mean, I actually kind of enjoy crying sometimes. I don't know. I feel like it is kind of therapeutic, and it gets out the toxins or whatever new age word you want to put on it. It just, it's good to get that stuff out. I wish there wasn't such a stigma against it, particularly for men. I know, like, if you're a man or a boy, it's really frowned upon to cry. And I just think that's so silly. I mean, if it was up to me, I'd have like crying retreats where we all came out to the desert together and everybody started crying. I've heard of people do that with laughing because if one person starts laughing, it's contagious. Everyone starts laughing. I wonder if that would be the case with crying. <laughs> I guess it'd be kind of a bummer, but I don't know. It could also be kind of healing. And speaking of healing, I actually feel my mood has 
has definitely elevated since I came out here and started making this video. So man, I think a lot of it is just being able to talk to someone. And while I guess I'm lucky in my case because I didn't really have somebody in real life to talk to, huh, I'm the kind of person who doesn't mind just blabbing about it all to everybody, all and sundry on the internet. <laughs> Uh, in your own situation, well, you might not have it that way, but gosh, my personal recommendation is if something's bothering you, it's really good to talk about it or write about it. I guess that's why writing a diary is so therapeutic for so many people. So I don't know, maybe you can find an outlet like that if you're experiencing some kind of emotional pain or torment. But as for me, I'm tired of crying and being sad and feeling emotional torment. I want my happy back. <laughs> you know that song, uh, what was from the 90s? Don't steal my sunshine. Well, I feel like somebody stole my dang sunshine and I want it back, okay? Maybe that's also why I'm wearing, the, why I like this yellow coat so much. It's like my sunshine jacket. And even if I'm bummed out or I'm cold or whatever, I put it on, I feel warm and happy because it's just so dang sunny. <laughs> so, it's, I'm gonna look at it like my my coat of armor, actually, this in 2021, because I am here to announce today, here in this video, that 2021 is the year I shall be embarking on a quest, okay? A quest similar to that of Don Quixote de la Mancha, who went around, even though people thought he was crazy, he went around and fought every, against all he thought was evil, and, you know, I was notorious for going and waving his sword around at windmills on his little trusty steed with Sancho Panza by his side. Well, I don't have a Sancho Panza, really, but I do have a trusty steed, my Rocinante, if you will, and I don't have a sword, but I do have a machete. Well, I don't have it with me, but I have it at home. Uh, and I think I could probably find at least a few windmills around here to go swinging it at. <laughs> if it makes me feel better, then by golly, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna go on a quest for happiness. The Happy Quest 2021. Join me, won't you? As I travel around Nevada, looking for windmills and, well, trying to cheer myself up. <laughs> to dream the impossible dream. <laughs> to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go. <laughs> this is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. <laughs> so, I'll see you out on the trail as I roam about the world questing and fighting to get my happy back. Because by gum, I ain't gonna let 2020 win. Not this time, for the world will be better for this. That one man, scorned and covered with scars, still strove with her last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable 